So if you're like me, you've probably done this before. You buy a thing, you go, oh my gosh, this will look so great on me. I love how it looks against my skin. It's so cute, it's a great place. It's on sale, maybe even. You take it home and then it goes into your closet to die. Tags maybe even stay on it and you never, ever, ever, ever wear it. Well, I have a giant closet full of jewelry because my husband bought me this amazing mirror cabinet. The great thing was I now had a home for all my jewelry. The bad thing was I now had a home for all my jewelry. <laughs> so now all of this stuff that I don't wear and don't need had a place it could go and be out of sight and out of mind. This year, one of my goals is to be more intentional with my shopping. Now, another part of this goal is to make sure that I'm cutting down on the things I have so that when I do go shopping, I have space for the new things that are coming into my collection. So today, on this day, I decided to go through my jewelry cabinet and finally, finally purge all of my high school jewelry from my life. Hey, it's been a minute. I have been very busy. <laughs> I know that's not really an excuse, but it's hard sometimes to maintain your hobbies when you get busy. We all know this, we're all adults here. Life happens and sometimes you have to take a break from the things that you do for fun and put a focus on the things that you do for money and sustenance and health and things of that nature. So my latest hiatus started with my birthday in the beginning of March and ended with me and my husband launching a business and now I'm finally back to make a YouTube video. <laughs> so with all of that said, I have a list here and you've seen the title, but today what we're going to discuss is jewelry. I love jewelry. Anyone who knows me knows I love jewelry. I have so much of it. I have always had different kinds. I'm always trying out different styles and I feel like I finally kind of figured out what my style is. In general, I have compiled a list <laughs> to hopefully help you save some time from making the same mistakes that I have made. And then of course, like I said, you've seen the title. We're gonna do a little my collection and also sort of low key piercing background slash story at the latter half of this video where I will go through all of the pieces I wear on a daily, some of the pieces I wear occasionally, and then showcase everything that is in the collection that I have built around these rules that I'm about to share with you. To start it off, we have number one. Buy nice, not twice. Basically, buy the thing you want. You've heard it before. Don't buy the cheap thing. Don't buy the dupe thing. If you know you want something, save for that, buy that. Don't just buy the stopgap that you think will get you through, will scratch the itch, because nine times out of 10, you buy whatever dupe, you buy whatever stopgap, you buy the thing you can afford now, the thing that will give you that instant gratification, and then you're inevitably disappointed by it, and you go buy the thing you wanted anyway, and you waste money. If this is not you, by the way, do not listen to this advice. You're lucky, you're blessed, you're the best of us. Oh my gosh, run in the other direction. If you are like me and you're like a shopaholic on the low, then this advice is for you. I am super guilty of trying to get the look, you know? Get the look, her look, but cheaper. And so I will buy some quick fix, some simple thing, some cheap thing that I think will kind of scratch the itch and it never does. I always end up going back and buying the thing I actually wanted later. And again, if you're in a position to do this, if you're the kind of person that does this, then this is who I'm talking to. If you don't care, couldn't care less, then I really don't know why you clicked on this video, but thank you for watching. <laughs> I, on the other hand, am the type of person that shops you know, till I drop. Me and my mom love to go to the mall and window shop. I love to go with my girlfriends and I'll get in that mode where I'm just like, oh my gosh, everything looks cute. I have to buy it all. And then I come home and I'm like, <laughs> you know, you know that feeling? Just looking at your purchases like why? But I don't return them because that would involve going back out. And so then I have this closet full, or in this case, jewelry cabinet full of crap that I don't wear. But if you really, really want something and you wait on it and you save for it, you know you still want it if you buy it and it's been six months <laughs> or whatever timeline. So it's also a better indicator of whether you really, really want a thing. Which leads really well into my point number two. Don't buy into trends. 
We are in the world of Instagram and TikTok. Every day there's a new trend. Every style is coming back from the 2000s. I've seen the scrunchy tops. I've seen the poofy headbands. I've seen the, I haven't seen Bermuda shorts yet, thank goodness, but I, I mean, potato shoes, you name it, it's all coming back. Trends are cyclical. We have all seen it happen time and time again. They come in a, into style, they go out of style. If you're 18 and you're trying to figure out your personal style, Heck, if you're 30 and you're still trying to figure out your personal style, try the trends. Like, you gotta experiment. But if you're like me, and you go shopping and buy things you know you're not gonna wear, stop it. Stop it right now. Stop it. Get help. Stop. <laughs> we need to stop. We need to not just buy everything. Everything we think will just be, oh my gosh, this is the trend. This is the thing that's just gonna complete my personal style. Hey. There's no such thing as being complete. There's no such thing as perfect. We are all on a journey. It is a continuous evolution, improvement. It's never gonna be done. So stop attaching that to things. Figure out what you like. <laughs> Figure out what you wear all the time. Oftentimes, especially in the case of jewelry, that's gonna be like what's sitting on your bedside table. What do you never take out? What do you put on every day without even thinking about it? Those are the things. <laughs> that you should be looking for. And I know this is hilarious coming from somebody who has a head to toe rose gold jewelry look, <laughs> but I'm, I'm here to tell you, I love rose gold. My first rose gold thing was a pair of glasses and I wore them consistently for like two years. And slowly but surely I would pick up other rose gold pieces here and there because I loved it so much. If it was a trend, I would have bought those glasses and then retired those glasses and moved on. So now I'm in a place where I have quite a collection, but it's a collection of things that I purely enjoy for my own purpose. Like it's me that wants it. It's not Instagram ads telling me I need it. It's me waking up every day and saying, yes, I love rose gold. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. Figure out what you like. It can be a trendy piece. I'm not saying trends are awful. Oftentimes trends are how we find out what we like because hey, maybe you wouldn't have worn it like that before. And now you see the trend and it's inspiring to you. What I'm saying is don't buy every trend. Don't jump on every bandwagon that comes down the street, you know? But just don't buy it because it's trending. Buy it because you want it. Rule number three, be practical. I know we all in the 2000s lived through the statement pieces. You know, the 2016s were rife with like the long statement owl necklace, the beanie, the boots. It was all like had to make a statement. You can only make so many statements. <laughs> and I mean, again, if your statement pieces are still getting worn, then by all means, keep them. But if you're, again, like me, hello, recovering shopaholic, and you buy statement pieces because wow, they're so cool. Wow, they look great on you. However, if they come home, go in your closet and never get worn because you're always reaching for the same white button down, black tank top and black pants, <laughs> Nike forces, <laughs> then you need to stop. My closet is currently more statement pieces than the basics that I wear every day. Don't buy statement pieces because statement pieces. Buy things that you will wear. Ask yourself these questions. How often will I wear it? How many things in my closet does it go with? Can I think of an outfit that this would go perfectly with? Or better yet, more than one outfit? Can I think of an event I would love to wear this to? Cause event type purchases are also okay. There are still gonna be weddings and baby showers and birthdays, maybe your own, that you wanna wear some crazy loud statement piece to, that's fine. Just every piece can't be a statement piece if you're not a statement piece person, you hear me? With that all said, I would like to now go into my collection. Keep this in mind because a lot of what is in my collection was purchased under these parameters. It was purchased because it's versatile, it's purchased because I wear it every day. In fact, I would say 80% of my jewelry collection, besides like rings and things that you can't sleep in, I like never take off, ever. I never take out most of my earrings, I never take off my bracelets. I live in this stuff. And a lot of it is because it can handle it now, like it's high quality, it's not H&M Forever 21 crap that's gonna tarnish. And I love it that much that I don't wanna take it off. So thinking about your jewelry and your clothes, everything differently does help you to feel less overwhelmed when you're getting dressed and more stylish and put together every time you go out. So I hope this helps. And with that, let's get into the fun stuff, the jewelry collection. 
starting off with what I'm wearing, and we'll get a bit into why this spawned this entire craziness, just so you can see. It's a tiny, tiny little hoop earring that just had to be removed from one of my piercings because it was angry at it, and I'll get into that in a second. But that leads a great segue into what I'm wearing on my ears. Now, a lot of this stuff never comes out, especially in the piercings, um, nose included, but the front ones I do take out a lot. And in my front piercing first hole right now, I have these hoops from All Right. They are vermeil, I think they're rose gold vermeil, so they are not 100% rose gold, like not 100% gold, but I like that because, I mean, they're hefty, so if they were gold, they would have been much more expensive than they were. I've mentioned All Right before in a previous video. I really like them because they have rose gold as an option. A lot of the, like, that girl favorite locations, like Majuri, do not cater to us weirdos that decided to commit wholeheartedly to rose gold, so <laughs> I really appreciate All Right because they have rose gold. Yeah, these are my favorite earrings to wear every day. If you catch me in real life, you're gonna see me wearing either those or these unless I'm going somewhere special. So these are my other favorite pair of earrings from AU Rate or All Rate, whichever. I do not know how to say their name. I have enough of their jewelry you'd think I would know. Moving right on into what's in my ear currently, we have this little huggy. This is from Hellsberg Diamonds. It is actually diamonds. It's like the only thing I own from a traditional jewelry store, so that's kind of hilarious. So that was one of my uh, birthday gifts to myself, and I'm very, very pleased with them. Then we have these studs that are right behind them. These are also diamonds. I can't remember the carat size. I mean, obviously you can see they're very small. This is from Etsy. I do not know what shop I bought it from and I don't know the quality, but you know, it's a seamed ring. So if you're looking for a conch earring, get a seamed ring that's pretty big. I think you need like nine millimeters or something for a conch, depending on your ear anatomy. That is from Etsy, like I said, but tons of places sell rings for that piercing. Uh, one of my favorites, they're quite pricey, but if we're talking about, you know, in comparison with places like All Right and Hellsberg that sell diamonds, um, for these kinds of unusual piercings, I really like Maria Tosh. I don't have anything from them. I plan to buy things from them in the future, however, so we'll see. But I know they sell a hoop like this, so if you're looking for something that is fully rose gold, yellow gold, white gold, like 14 karat, definitely check out Maria Tosh. I, let me not go off on a tangent on this brand that I definitely don't have represented here in this collection of jewelry we're about to go through. But anyway, that is who I would ideally buy from. Either them or an APP, like, recognized and reputable piercer. They oftentimes have very high quality jewelry as well, including 14 karat and diamonds, if that's what you're looking for, which leads very well into this next piece of jewelry that I have in my ear. This is from my piercer that I shop at who does sell um, 14 karat, and this is a 14 karat piece, and I got it done by them and had them put that in it, and I haven't changed it since then. So many of my other piercings were done with like a piercing gun at Claire's or by a friend out of a tattoo parlor. Like, don't do it. Don't be like me. Go to Maria Tosh. If you're lucky enough to be by them, they also do piercings, or go to an APP, like reputable and certified piercer. Do not, do not, and if you do it, no, it's without my blessing, go to Claire's. I'm so sorry, Claire's, I don't mean to like at you, but those piercing guns, especially for cartilage, can ruin your ears. I have somehow dodged a bullet, but some of these piercings are not even, and I, if I could go back and do it all over again, I would have gone to a piercer. It hurts more, yes, but your healing process is easier. So anyway, not to segue, but <laughs> just to say, comparing this piercing and its healing process to all my other piercings, night and day. I mean, I'll get to this ear and you'll see why, but I have a piercing that is still healing like three years after the fact, and I would 100% have rather had done that at this piercer than where I got it done. I might even have to get it re-pierced, so it's worth it to just put up with the pain and go to a good place. This ear has largely the same stuff in it going up the lobe. Then we get to the cartilage. This is the cartilage that I got done at Claire's. 
I survived, but it took forever to heal. I think it took a couple years to heal. It is probably six or seven years old now, so it's totally completely healed. And I have since got it upgraded to something from my piercer um, in Atlanta, which is, I should say, it's Virtue and Vice is where I go for any of you who are Atlanta locals. They also have a sister shop in Marietta. So either one of those places is where I go nowadays to get my ears pierced or to get jewelry changed out. Um, but this is a 14 karat gold little snaky guy. I love it. It's so cute. I actually called the shop to have them order it for me because I saw that they had it online and then sometimes I would go in and they didn't have it in the store and I was like, no, please, I want this. I want this little snake. So they actually ordered it for me and then I was able to go in and get it put into my piercing. So I'm thinking that's going to be my first purchase from Maria Tosh is a little clicker hoop for this piercing but I need to let it calm down first. So I went to the piercer with my sister-in-law and they put in this titanium iodized barbell. It's got some stones, like cubic zirconia stones in it. And it's iodized through an electromagnetic process to make it look rose gold-esque. Um, I don't really think the match is that convincing if you're up close, but from far away, it's, you know, it is what it is. The piercing needs to calm down. And so this is how we get it to calm down. And this is what I was talking about because apparently for what I wanted, which is a tiny hoop, this piercing should have been done a little bit more forward, like a little bit closer to the side of my ear um, for this to fit, this size to fit comfortably. They think, you know, we'll see when it calms down if it, if it agrees with it <laughs> after it's been given some time off from the hoop. But, um, you know, that's the kind of thing that a specialized piercing shop will tell you. It's like if you tell them the end goal jewelry you're trying to wear, they will tell you where you need to get that piercing done. And if you're looking for a particular piercing, they might look at your anatomy and say, you know what, that piercing actually isn't going to be the best option for you. You might want to try this alternative, but we don't think that piercing will heal very well with your ear, you know, set up the way that it is. Like for me, for instance, I have this one forward helix on this side, but I have very small ears. So if I wanted to go up and do like a triple, it probably wouldn't fit. So they'll tell you that, whereas a lot of people will just be like, sure, and pierce you. And then your piercings might be uneven or look weird when they heal and not be what you really wanted. Um, so I would definitely recommend, I mean, it does kind of suck to go to a place and be like, I want this piercing and have them say no, but it sucks more to go get a piercing done like this, that now I can't wear the jewelry I want in. Moving right along, let's jump into my fingies. So on my hands, we'll start with the arguably less interesting right hand. Starting from the index finger, I have this little snaky snake. This is from the same shop as my engagement ring. It is 14 karat gold. It has little champagne diamond eyeballs. I don't know if the camera will focus. It's, they're very small, um, but it's got two little champagne diamond snake eyes. And I got this to match the earring that I have and I really, really love it. Um, like I said, this is from Anna Sheffield, which is the place that my engagement ring is from. So it's a pretty like thick and hardy 14 karat gold ring. It's not like your tiny dainty little rings like what we're about to get into next, which is these guys. These are from Majuri and All Right respectively. The top one is from Majuri. It's a little, you know, open ring with two diamonds bezel set on either side. This was actually the promise ring that my husband gave me when we were still dating. And I love this ring because it's like, you know, if you think of these diamonds as each one representing one of us, it's like representing the space in between because we were not yet married, which was so cute. And I obviously, when he first gave it to me, I wore it on my ring finger on my left hand, but it has since moved over to my right hand once I got my engagement ring. And then once it did that, I felt like it looked lonely. So I bought this tiny little diamond solitaire prong set ring, very thin and dainty with a twisted band. This is from All Right. And I love how they stack together. It looks like a little mini wedding stack. It's just like so cute and dainty. So right next to that is a signet ring. It is my first signet ring as an adult. So for our anniversary this year, I was the one in charge of planning things. So I did dinner with some massages ahead of that. And then I got some handkerchiefs and hand embroidered them with our 
last name initial and also got us these signet rings. So my husband has one. It looks different from this. It's square and yellow gold because he wears yellow gold. And then mine is this one from Bray, which has a pave situation going around the center where you can get your initial of choice engraved. It's very faint. I'm actually considering going to uh, an engraving place and seeing if they can etch it in deeper, but I do very much like it. Um, so that has my right hand covered. Moving over to my arguably more interesting left hand. You've already seen this ring, but this is my Cartier Love ring. I wear this on my thumb. I'm at home today, so I don't generally wear all of this jewelry all the time at home unless I'm really feeling it, but I put these on just to show all of everything. So that is where I would wear this ring if I was going out. This ring was in my favorites video, so you have probably already seen it. And if you haven't, then the love ring is also hugely popular. So if you haven't seen mine, you've seen someone's. <laughs> but yeah, this is a really great ring. It's 18 karat gold, so it is a little softer than my other rings, which are all 14 karat. So you can definitely see there's some hairline scratches on it. From far away, it's not that obvious, and the Cartier Love Collection, unless you get the Pave versions, tend to get very scratched very easily. You can take them to Cartier and they'll polish it and essentially move, remove a layer of the material to get rid of the scratches and shine it up. But I have chosen to just kind of live with it because you can only do that so many times and it's just gonna get scratched again. <laughs> I love this ring, very happy to have this in my collection. Um, and it's like the only thing to me that can really hold up against this puppy, which is my wedding stack, Truly, this is my favorite piece that I own in my jewelry collection, and not because of how beautiful it is, but obviously also because of my memories around my wedding day and wearing this and just feeling married and very cool and like a big grown-up married lady. <laughs> but this is a stack all from Anna Sheffield. Both my and my husband's wedding bands are from Anna Sheffield, and my engagement ring is also from them. Fun fact, if you didn't know, my husband let me pick my ring, so he proposed uh, just you know, no ring verbally. We both were fine with that. Some people I know wouldn't enjoy being proposed to without a ring and a whole big to-do, but for us it was actually the perfect proposal, very intimate. And then, super fun for me, as you can see I love jewelry, so I was actually then able to go and choose my own ring. So when I say I sourced this diamond, I am being literal. I actually was able to work closely with the people at Anna Sheffield to get a diamond that was to my exact specifications. The center stone is champagne, a champagne natural diamond. It's just over a carat and it is beautifully cut. Around it are white diamonds in a halo and then on either side there are white trillion stones. It's on like a knife edge band with this beautiful, you can't really see, but the basket underneath is so cool to me. I love it. Something about rings I'm always looking at is the bottoms. I sometimes really hate how the stone will look like from the bottom or side of the ring. So I was really adamant that the basket be as pretty as the top, which I personally, obviously this is my ring, so I feel a little bit biased probably towards it, but I am in love with the side of this ring as well as the top of it. I just think from all angles, it's such a cool piece, so unique and interesting. And then the bands also from Anna Sheffield. They are a suite so they all came together. This is the Bia ring style. I customized mine a little bit but the style is ultimately um, from the Bia collection and this band suite was designed to go around this particular ring so it's all a little bit bespoke, a little bit custom, a little bit extra, not your everyday wedding stack. Starting from the top this is a 14 karat gold chevron band right above my engagement ring. And then below we have this band which has champagne stones in graduating sizes. So going from a very small size on the outside to a bigger size in the center and then back to a small size on the other side. They're all champagne stones so they are all different colors because they're all natural. They're all kind of unique as the earth created them. From the very, very bottom is a champagne diamond ring going into white diamonds. So it's actually kind of an ombre effect. Champagne diamonds are set on the sides. Then we go to white in the center of the V and finishing off with 
champagne stones on the other side as well. It's a super subtle detail that you would never ever notice, but I know, and that makes me happy. Again, all of this combines into a totally unique wedding sweet wedding band set that I just love. I mean, I wear this every day doing everything all the time because I am literally obsessed with it. So that is all of my rings. And I have other rings in my collection, but as far as like my everyday, you're generally going to see me in these. Like I have a ring for my grandmother that I sometimes wear to events, things like that. But for my day to day, this is what I wear. So on this wrist, we have two dainty little guys. The top bracelet, actually, and I pulled this stuff out to show, but I have some of my baby jewelry over here, and a lot of my baby jewelry inspired my adult jewelry purchases. <laughs> so this bracelet was one of my baby bracelets. It's actually broken. I plan to get it fixed because I do want to give some of these to my kiddos one day. Um, but this is basically the adult-inspired version of that. It's from All Right. It's a little gold bar, no stones or anything, just a little bar with a little dainty chain. And going over here, you can see I have very dainty wrists, so I have this on the smallest setting, but I actually kind of like that there's this little delicate bit of chain hanging on there. It just makes it look overall more dainty and delicate and lovely. Just below that, we have a diamond station bracelet. This is from Bray. My husband bought me this for Christmas a few years back. It is the only white gold thing that I wear every day, but it's so dainty that it like doesn't at all bother me. And I'm also trying to get over myself being so matchy-matchy and get a little bit more into mixed metals. So I really do like how these look together. And I'll sometimes wear like a silver watch or something to really accentuate the mixed metals look. So then on to the left wrist. Now I'm not wearing my watch right now, so I'll put my watch on so you can see the full effect. But I just bought this tennis bracelet for my birthday from the Ring Concierge. It is diamonds, it is gorgeous, and it has this cute little heart, ah! Like, I already knew I liked the little dangly chain on that other bracelet, but this one has a heart on the end. How cute is that? I wear that right below my watch. Um, this is my recently my favorite watch. It is the Mini Lexington from Michael Kors, and I just love this bracelet. It's so pretty. So this is usually what you see me in. I have a whole watch case over here that I'm also going to go through. But again, we started with the things I wear every day. So this is my wrist setup for my day to day.